right, and for example number two, we're going to be doing a picture frame. A lot of you guys have got chairs, tables, picture frames, and they have Rococo kind of twirly, swirly designs on them. And of course, you don't want to model that, but you can sculpt it easily and quickly in ZBrush. So that's what we're going to do. I have my low poly here, I've unwrapped it, and then I've got the high poly here, and it's ready to go. Of course, center pivot, delete history, modify, freeze transformations, and we're ready to export. So file, export selection, and remember even though this is the high poly in Maya, this is going to be low poly compared to ZBrush, where we're going to be working in hundreds of thousands of vertices. It's the low poly frame. Export selection, as an OBJ of course. Let's import it. Draw it once on the canvas. There we go. And press T to enter edit mode. Press F to focus. Let's pan around it. F again. Shift. Alright, there we go. And look at your topology that you got from Maya. Toggle line fill poly F on and off. So if we were to start sculpting on this right now, you'll notice that it's very strange and faceted because it's trying to work with the long stretched quads that we got from Maya. This is not going to be helpful for sculpting. So we're going to have to, of course, add a lot more vertices so we can sculpt and rearrange this topology so it looks nicer. So let's go to divide. You can try it with smooth on or off. I'm going to try it with smooth on this time. It seems to be holding its shape pretty well. I was worried that we might lose the edges, but it seems to be okay. Let's press it one more time, so we're about 53. Now, let us come down to Dynamesh. By default, I think your Dynamesh, ignore that, is about 128. We want to crank it up a bit to about 260, something like that, because we want to maintain this kind of high vertice limit. Dynamesh is another way of just rearranging the topology on your mesh in ZBrush. So let's hit Dynamesh. Because we added divisions, it's going to ask, would you like to freeze it? Just hit no. We just want it to Dynamesh. All right. So now we've got this. If you zoom in and take a look, the Dynamesh topology is kind of weird and squiggly, but it did do a nice job of preserving our edges, which is what we wanted. I was afraid of us losing. Let's zoom back out. You don't want to work with Dynamesh topology because it's weird. Look at that. It behaves oddly when you sculpt. So now we're going to go to Zero Mesher. And right now I'm at 76,000. We could do with a little more. So I'm going to choose double. So we should have what, like about 140,000. Let's hit zero mesher. And let's see. Just make sure that it maintains this edge and the crispness of our edges. But also gives us nice quads to work with when we sculpt. Alright, looking pretty good. So I've just pressed shift there to lock to an orthogonal. And now I'm going to turn off the poly count. So now we're thinking, oh, this is a picture frame. I sure don't want to sculpt this and then try to do the other side identically. That would be awful. I'm also going to do a quick check of our position to make sure this imported correctly. Oh, look at that. Um, this might not be an issue for you, but it was for me, and I'm glad I just checked now. Under your geometry, if you come down to position, it's under Z mesher. You'll have X, Y, Z. You should all be zeros, but mine imported with a strange Y. If any of your numbers are odd, just set them back to zero. And that will make um, our symmetry tool work much happier. So I'm glad that I checked that. Make sure that you do as well. Make that a positive zero as well. So hopefully everything will be just fine. So let's go up to transform. Click it. Come down here to symmetry. We're going to turn on symmetry. And right now we have all X, Y, and Z axes selected. So now when I hover my tool out here, you'll notice matching red dots mirroring everything I do on all axes. So now when I do this, it's going to meet me perfectly. So now it will be really easy to just come in and do fast design. Isn't it beautiful? And this could be a fun time to experiment with other brushes. Just 
to whatever it is you need to. We can get some fast squiggly Rococo patterns right away. Do, 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 do. Of course, I'm sure your guys' will look much nicer and beautiful. Alright, so let's just do this as an example. So this is our high poly, we're at about 150,000. Let's go export, and we will name this High Poly Frame ZBrush, just so that we're clear. And it's OBJ, right folder, alright, save. Alright, now we are going to export out the lowest poly one, so we can kind of prove that the really high poly one we did in ZBrush will bake really nicely onto a 36 word to see object. So we're going to name this lowest poly frame. Export selection. Open up our X normals. Did that old one. We're going to add a mesh. We're going to choose the high poly frame from ZBrush. Open. Low definition mesh, add our mesh, navigate to where you saved it, samples, frame, and lowest poly frame, open, what do you call this, low frame, same settings, 1024, 1024, normal and ambient occlusion, anti-aliasing, time two times, save and replace, Press generate maps. All right, and that's done baking. So let's go back to Maya. So here is our very, very low poly, 36 vertice frame. Let's assign it a new material, give it a blend, and let's go find our normal map and see how it turned out. Tangent space normals, input connections, file. And it was low frame normals open. Not bad. And let's go open up the ambient occlusion as well. Do, 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 low frame occlusion. Make sure to break our transparency connection. Turn off that grid so you can really see it. All right. So now we have the appearance of like 150,000 like high poly zebra sculpt on our 36 vertice object, and it looks great. So good luck to you with all of your normal baking.